Peter Dirk, I'm interested in the way you switch between English and Afrikaans. Do you think differently in the two languages? Do things come out differently depending on which language you use? Interestingly, my father would always speak Afrikaans to us as a beloved dad, as yes. pa and as om helsing and as lifter and whatever. When he spoke English, we ran for the door. Okay. English was the language of, you are going to get into trouble. Hmm. So I spoke German and Afrikaans when I was growing up as a little kid. Um, I learned English at school. Uh, I went to drama school and learned how to say darling beautifully. And I spent four years in London. And um, I suppose I've used English as my sort of my, my default accent. But I think in English, many times, but sometimes I really need to think in Afrikaans, when, especially during the years of apartheid. To do my show in Afrikaans, to think in Afrikaans, was being really truly pulling off all the silk and the covers, I was really, the rawness was there. So you needed to say certain things in Afrikaans almost because that was your sense of the root of the problem you were addressing? That was the abracadabra yeah. to open the cave. And that is why I had to take my shows to the State Opera House while I was at the market during the 80s. I mean, John Carney and Manny Manum and, and, and Barney Simon, it was very important. We are going to boycott the apartheid structures. Yes, yes, yes. But I can't boycott the structures. I must piss against the door of the structures. As I say in Afrikaans, ek moet op die voorstoep kak en klop vir papier. <laughs> so, yeah. so I would go and actually perform at the Opera House in Pretoria and get all my enemies sitting there and, you know, really, truly make sure that I know where the exit is so that if I have to run, I, I can grab my box and, and, and leave. Yeah. But I did the show in Afrikaans because that's where all the government people were and all the security police and the spies and the censor board. Let, let's talk a little bit about now. Um, your new show, um, When in Doubt, Say Darling. What's different about this? This is, this is not presumably Peter Dirk Ace's greatest hits uh, one more road show. It's, it's, it's new, but in what way? Well, I think having done the echo of a noise and having told a story, I have the confidence now to think that, to know that I can actually use that technique as well yeah. as do characters. But the most important aspect of this show is somebody said to me the other night, Is this your last show? And I said, Yes, every show, every night is my last performance. Yes. Because tomorrow there'll be a different audience. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, I have spent 40 years of my life focus, focusing on the negative, and my God, there was so much negative. There was the whole apartheid spectrum of horror stories that I had to try and make palatable for people who didn't even want to know about it. Um, the, 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 the denials around HIV, the, the enormous disappointment of seeing my party, the ANC, my government of Nelson Mandela, become careless and cause unbelievable death and destruction. And careless is the worst word I can use for a democratically yes. elected government. And there was this whole thing about Manto Chabalala and this whole thing about Jacob Zuma, who just gave us this whole spectrum of corruption, who was, I think we are, I think the country is in trauma. We need counseling. I think Cyril is a counselor. And I think flying on in economy seats did a lot to relax people as well. So I want to also use this show to focus on the things that are working. And many of my sketches in this performance are stories of my experience in Darling with the kids. How the kids started asking me, how can I do that? Can I play? What is that? Is that a piano? Can yes. I play the piano? Can I draw? Can I, do, can I do this? Yes, yes, yes. Come, 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 come. And this extraordinary, I suppose, discovery of how many things we take for granted. I mean, where a child of 10 picks up a book which has no pictures about a cat. And I say, what does the cat look like? And she says, I don't know. There are no pictures. I said, no, but what do you see in your head? She said, what? I said, the picture in your head? Yes. And she's, am I allowed to? Yeah. She didn't know she could use her imagination. Anyway, I want to have these stories, and this has been actually the great success so far of this new show, which is developing all the time, is people say, thank God I heard these wonderful stories about the youth, about children believing in a future, because we usually hear about people doubting the future. Peter Dirk, when will you know that it's time after 50 years and more to Hang up your high heels. <laughs> Funny, a woman said that to me the other day. She said, and she meant it well, she said, when are you going to stop? I said, when you die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as I can, I must. Yes. If I can't, I can't. Um, and as long as I have an audience, make no mistake, when I come to the theater and I look out there and there's nobody, I will not do anymore. 
But I have my little venue in Darling, Evita Peron, which I do, a, I do a, two shows, sometimes three every week end. I have six shows, which I can do solidly during the day. I tour with three shows at the boot of my car. Um, so I've got the material and I bring it up to date every weekend. So I'm really there mm. uh, in different ways. Um, I believe very strongly that I have got to remind people where we come from so that we can find out where we are repeating the bad things. Bad politics reinvents itself. Apartheid will never come back again under the same name. But separate developments are really taking hold all over the world. Brexit, BEE. Yes. And we have to find ways of not being angry because angry doesn't work. And we just make balance and find out where we can fit in. I always finish the show by offering my guest three wishes. So mm -hmm. three wishes, wish number one. What's your wish for young people who think, I'd also like to be on the stage, I'd like to perform, I've got something to say? My reaction to that is to say, then do it. Do it, start tonight. Do five minutes, do two minutes. Talk to your cat. The cat will listen and if the cat walks away, then rewrite. <laughs> <laughs> What's your wish for our country? Oh, I just wish our country would realize how lucky we are to be in the 24th year of a democracy that is working. Every speed wobble we're going through, every tweet and hashtag that makes you want to go to Australia is just the result of good democratic patience. It's never going to be perfect. Everybody's fingerprints on the silver chalice of freedom. And I think the biggest thing that we white, specifically we white South Africans are doing is not doing our homework. We're not reading the story of the people in charge. We don't know where the passion ended and the corruption started. We don't even know how to pronounce their surnames. That's cheeky and rude. So I say to everybody, learn language. I say to my friends, when you give a present to your grandchildren, don't give them an iPad. Pay for two years of a language, Chinese. Let them start at the age of four. Because if you have a language, international language, you'll always have a job. And just a last wish then. Peter Durkes, what's your wish for yourself? That I do a good show tonight. Thank you very much for giving us your time on <laughs> Under the Skin. You. Thank you.